Hello, I am the Lock Noob, and today I want to talk about picking wafer locks, or at least the tools by which you can get into them. I'll be doing the, the actual picking in separate videos so that this one doesn't go on too long. My first three were about 15 minutes each, which is just too much. So what do I mean by wafer locks? Well, wafer locks are relatively uh, low security applications, um, which funny enough includes things like uh, filing cabinets, drawers, car door locks and, uh, uh, and car ignition switches, uh, which I find odd that uh, those be considered low security, but there you go. Quite often people have wafer locks in things like um, lift accesses and um, all sorts of electronic um, access panels and those kind of things. So although they are low security locks, sometimes they're using relatively high security applications. Anyhow, um, the types of wafer lock that you might come across uh, are, are more or less here. Uh, these two cam locks are roughly the same, but I don't know whether you can see inside. I'll try to bring them closer to the camera. Um, but you, yes, you might be able to tell that the but the actual wafers on this lock need to be pushed up and down at the same time. So that's why uh, that's why if you look at one of the keys, it's a double-sided key. On this cam lock, though, you might just be able to tell if I get it in the light properly that all the wafers are on. There you go, on one side, just here. So they only need to be pushed up by varying degrees. So there are two different types of uh, wafer lock. It's really good to bear that in mind that you either need to push wafers one direction or both directions, which well, brings me on to the tools in a second. Same with, um, this is from a Citroen uh, 107, it's a brand new door lock from Amazon. Um, the only difference being, of course, that there's a, a little flap to keep all the dirt and weather outside on a car door, which needs to be pushed to one side. And inside there, um, you find your wafer stack. And this is a car. This is a car ignition switch. Again, I'll be picking all of these in other videos. But essentially, with this, um, it's it's a wafer lock, and uh, you probably can't see inside there. It's quite deep inside. Um, I think you can just about make out that again, the, the wafers are all one side on this. So although the key would be double sided, um, like most car keys, and here's here's one of mine. Like most car keys, you can see that the teeth are uh, this side and this side. Doesn't mean that the wafers are always on both sides. Worth checking because it will matter what tool you go for. So, what sorts of tools can we use? Well, for those wafer locks where the wafers have to be manipulated on either side, you can use a set of tools like this. These are um, cheap GoSlow ones. Um, and actually, if you look here, you can see that they're just like normal rakes apart from there's two sides to them and they come in all sorts of um, variations there we go try and get a focus on that all sorts of variations in uh, size and shape and waveform if you like uh, these ones are sometimes classed as car picks because they're very good at picking um, locks like this Citroen, uh, no sorry, Peugeot car door, where you need to manipulate the, the wafers on uh, both sides. Again, I'll show that video later, but all you're going to do is you're going to go through your series of rakes, raking back and forth, and uh, trying to find one which will open that lock for you. So that's double-sided, um, I guess you call them automotive picks. What other things do we have to open them with? Well, actually, if I keep that lock there, um, you might have jigglers. 
it's a set of I think they're some kind of low grade steel or aluminium um, pick and the idea is is that these will replicate um, a car key that's loose and worn that you can wiggle inside the door you actually don't need any any tensioners on this you just wiggle it up and down you um, pull it back and forth a bit you, you'll literally uh, move it straight up and straight down and what you're trying to do is you're going to turn them over try the other side move to the next key turn it over move to the other side move to the next key and keep going until you've gone through all of them and usually one of them works we can uh, look at this a bit better on another day One thing's worth mentioning actually is how do you tension these? Well, with a lot of these uh, kits, including the cheap Goso one I have, you can see that you have these uh, Y tensioners um, or pincers, which you choose the appropriate side. You can see they've got these little grooves on here to grip inside the lock. Don't put them too far inside to so interfere with the wafers and then you can apply tension like that while still being able to put your picks inside either side of the uh, there we go. see that bit better either side of the wafers there and you can still apply tension by putting light tension turning up or down okay what other kind of tools can we get into lots with well uh, you might have seen a double prong tension wrench um, like this. There we go. And that's quite good for putting into uh, these cam locks and applying tension. Um, and again, you can put tools on the inside there, your picks inside to actually pick the wafers. Uh, when you've got a small cam lock like this, you probably don't want to go in with... Um, a, a big tool like this, you probably damage your wafers and probably damage your pick trying to force it in. So there are another set of tools which you can use, which are here. And these are ball rakes. Uh, this one is commonly known as a snowman because it looks a bit like a snowman, especially when it's that way up. We have a half snowman which is the snowman, but only half of it. And something which we call the ball rake instead of the uh, headless snowman, which is a shame. These will be able to slide in and out of here and you can manipulate the top and the bottom wafers in turn um, with the appropriate tension tool applied. You also have mini jigglers, same as the automotive jigglers, uh, would you believe smaller and again you can go through and turn each key um, back and forth gently up and down gently in and out at angles and you're jiggling that key around with a little bit of mod moderate turning force a bit of torque on there just to uh, try to convince the lock that you've got the right key there are another set of picks which you might want to try when you're attacking wafer locks and these are wave rakes um, very very few videos out there that sort of talk about wave rakes essentially they're just a set of rakes um, usually found in these automotive pick sets and what they do is they, they have essentially different waveforms so the peaks and troughs on these rakes are all at different, are all different variants essentially. You can see some there. And the idea is again, you can use them in a number of different locks. You can use them in uh, car locks to go in there and rake back and forth. Um, you could even, if you've got the right lock, uh, put it into a smaller one like this. Some of these are quite thin, as you can see. So they do get into a number of different types of locks. And uh, I'll probably show you in another video, you can use them as dimple rakes as well. Sometimes I've actually seen them advertised as dimple rakes where you're actually going along on the inside of dimple locks. 
um, and using this as a rake this way. Uh, these really, really thin shafted ones here are actually quite good at doing that. So there we go. That's the uh, um, three or four different types of rake you can use to get into wafer locks. Um, oddly enough, out of all of these, the, the most versatile picks are these two, which actually work in a very similar way, as you can imagine. And they're just the ball rake and a simple, well, I guess it's a, like a, a wide half diamond, a hollowed out half diamond. I, I personally, you could not use a half diamond if you wanted to. I find that these are actually surprisingly useful and with gentle raking can get you into most wafer locks um, just on their own. All, all the rest um, are useful sometimes, but these two will get you into most of the wafer locks. On my next video, I'll show you a bit more about how to actually get into some of them. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.